We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you. We honor you today, God. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of God. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, praise you, Lord. Praise you. We honor you. We bless you, O God. Hallelujah. We bless you, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, praise your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. Jesus. Oh, God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Mm. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, we bless you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm 
<clears throat> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, praise your name. Glory to God. We praise your name. We praise your name, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you the honor, O oh God. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Our soul suggests to you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I bring them all in the name. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mmm. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise you. We give you glory and we give you the honor. Bless the dead, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we honor you and we praise you today. Bless even now, God. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We welcome you. Amen. To our Sunday evening time of worship. I am your host, Bishop Darrell Towns, the founder and visionary of Worship, Word, and Praise, Evangelistic Tabernacle Church Ministries. Amen. We praise God for this day, for this is the day that God has made, and we will surely rejoice and be glad in it. And we praise God for each, each and every one of you who are joining us, amen, by Facebook Live and by our Ustream channel. We praise God for you. We bless God for you. Amen. We thank God that we Every Sunday, amen, every Wednesday night, we're right here, Facebook Live, and our Ustream channel, amen. We're going to broaden our horizons in the near future, amen. We bless God. We're going to broaden our horizons in the near future, but at this present, God says, just stay right here. So we're going to remain on Facebook Live and, and our Ustream channel, amen, until God releases us to go to the next level and the next step, amen. God bless you. God bless you, Evangelist uh, Krause. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. We bless God for you joining us this evening. Again, we want to welcome you to a time of worship. I am your host. Amen. Bishop Darrell Towns. I am the visionary and the founder of Worship, Word, and Praise, Evangelistic Tabernacle Church Ministries. Amen. Located in the city of Patterson and new state of the beautiful state, Garden State of New Jersey. Amen. And we praise God for each one of you. Amen. Who have thought it not robbery to take time out and to join us this evening. Amen. We just bless God for you. Just a few announcements. Amen. Uh, before we go into prayer and go into our word. Amen. We bless God before we go into our word. Amen. This afternoon. Praise God. Amen. Uh, just want to... Uh, uh, well, let me just say this before I get started. Amen. In the near future, uh, our format is going to change just a little bit. Amen. Uh, basically, on a Wednesday night, we're going to change our format just a little bit. Amen. And we're going to invite people on to share the testimony or share a word that God has placed on their heart. Amen. But we'll set the groundwork for that on Wednesday night. 
Amen. So join us on Wednesday night. Amen. You'll get an opportunity to come on with the bishop and share your word, share your testimony, how God has blessed you, how God has opened doors for you. Amen. On Wednesday night. So join us on Wednesday night. Amen. We're gonna open the we're gonna open the airways up uh, for the first time since we've been doing this. Amen. In about two years since we've been doing this, we're going to now open the lines up for those who want to give God a praise and that give God a word of thanksgiving for what he has done. So join us on Wednesday night. Amen. And we're going to allow you to come on at that time. Amen. To share the word of God. We thank God for evangelist uh, Valerie. Amen. Uh, Cow Crow, I believe it's Cowser. Amen. We thank God for her. Haven't seen her since the consecration back in 2013, I believe it was, and she was here. Amen. And we thank God for her. Amen. And for, for how God is, we know God is yet blessing her. Amen. Uh, get a pen and some paper. Amen. I want to give you some information. Amen. That you might want to write down and keep notes on it. Amen. We're going to give you a minute. Amen. To get that pen and paper. Amen. And we're going to give you some few announcements. Amen. We thank God that on next Sunday, amen, we're going to be celebrating the wife's birthday. Amen. We're going to be celebrating the wife's birthday on next Sunday. You'll give you further. We'll give you the opportunity to wish her a happy birthday by way of Facebook Live or by the way of uh, just posting it on Facebook. Amen. Uh, you'll see the post in a few days. But we want to thank God for, amen, for my wife. We bless God for her. Now, uh, just want to invite you, if you're living in the Stroudsburg area, we're going to start off in Pennsylvania as always. And if you're in the Pennsylvania area, you're viewing us from Pennsylvania, and I know we have some people that do view us from Pennsylvania area. We want to invite you to uh, join Pastor Carol Fernandez in the House of Prayer of the Living God in worship. If you have nowhere to worship or you're looking for a place of worship, looking for someone where you can grow in the Lord and hear, word, hear the word of God and not some off-the-wall word, amen, I invite you to join Pastor Carol Fernandez, amen, Pastor Carol Everett Fernandez, amen. She is the pastor of House of Prayer of the Living God. That's House of Prayer of the Living God, located at 1437 Bridges Road, 143 7 Bridges Road, Suite 202, second floor. Amen. She's on the second floor. There is an elevator there on the second floor where you can get in with the elevator, bring the blind, the lost, the lame, the whatever the conditions they got. Bring them to the house of prayer of the living God. And I guarantee they'll leave their hole and heal in Jesus' name. If you're driving, you come up Route 80 West or East and get off on exit 309. Amen. If you're coming from uh, the New Jersey area, Get up, drive 80 West, just as you pay the toll and cross over the gap. Exit 309 is the second exit after 310. Take exit 309. It'll bring you down on route, on route 209, a half a mile up 209, since the beautiful church, since the beautiful building where the house of prayer is located. Amen. She also has a Bible study prayer line. God bless uh, uh, my other God daughter in viewing tonight. God bless you. Amen. She also has a Bible study prayer line, Bible study conference line uh, on Tuesdays at seven o'clock. I tell you, I've been on that, uh, been on that Bible study conference line, and I'm telling you, I have been blessed. That dial-in number is area code 605-475-4120, 605-475-4120. And you can use the access code of uh, 324-9926, 324-9926. 9926. And then continuing in the Stroudsburg area, amen, is Faith to Faith Ministries. Amen. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The House of Prayer services begin at uh, 11 o'clock, early morning worship with the pastor, and 1130 with the blowing of the shofar, uh, calling the saints together, to call the saints of God together for worship at 1130. Um, then there's faith to faith ministry. Excuse me, throat is very dry. We've been singing and worshiping all day. Amen. Then there's faith to faith ministry. 
uh, located at 2035 Milford Road, also Route 209, amen, in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Pastor Juan and Stacy Harris are the pastors there. Their service begins at 11 a.m. So these are the two places in the Stroudsburg area, in the Pennsylvania area that I know of, that I can recommend to you that need a place of worship. Uh, then coming back into the Patterson area, amen, is Healing House Ministries. My very good friend, Apostle David Smiley, is the pastor there. At the, the church is located at 102 Broadway, amen, right across from the Justice Complex, better known as the police station, uh, right across from the uh, Justice Complex there, uh, 102 Broadway, Patterson, New Jersey. Services began, morning service is 10 a.m., Wednesday Bible study, 6.30 p.m., Noonday prayer every day, and Friday night service, I believe, is also 7.30 p.m. Um, also in the city of Patterson's Tabernacle of Prayer, pa Tabernacle of Praise, uh, 55 Patterson Street, uh, Pastor uh, Bishop Peter Williams and uh, Dr. Regina Williams are the pastor there. Amen. Their services is Sunday at 12 o'clock and Friday night, 7.30 and then, of course, then there's also is the Greater Assembly Holy House of Prayer here in the city of Patterson. Uh, they're located at, uh, I believe, it's 66 Arch Street. 66 Arch Street. Um, their services begin at 10 a.m. on Sunday school and 11 o'clock is morning worship. Uh, the pastor there is Apostle uh, Joseph uh, Robinson Sr., along with Prophetess uh, Robinson, his wife. Amen. <clears throat> All the pastors there here in the city of Patterson. Amen. Then in Hackensack, uh, Jackson Temple Church of God in Christ. Amen. Pastor Henry Redmond is the pastor. Amen. Located at 54 Fair Street. Amen. In Hackensack, New Jersey. Morning service, 1130. Amen. So these are the ministries that I invite you to fellowship with or to go to if you're looking for somewhere to fellowship. And then last but not least, the place where I worship and fellowship, and God has temporarily led me to drop my roots, I speak none other than Prevailing Rock Ministries. Prevailing Rock Ministries, better known as Miracle Land. Prevailing Rock Ministries, 293 Passaic Street, Hackensack, New Jersey. Amen. Right on the corner of Passaic Street and DeWolf Place. The pastor there is none other than Pastor William Spellman. Amen. So you can join us there every Sunday. Amen. 11 o'clock is Sunday school. 11.30, uh, 11 o'clock is Sunday school, 12 o'clock is morning worship, amen, and then when there is an afternoon service, it's 4 o'clock, now next Sunday at 4.30, amen, Pastor Redmond will be there, uh, will be with us at 4.30 at Prevailing Rock from Jackson Temple, he will be there ministering the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, so join us there, amen, I guarantee you will not be disappointed, but you will be thoroughly, thoroughly excuse me, thoroughly, thoroughly blessed. Amen. We praise God for all of these ministries that God has placed in my life. Uh, these are people I know I can trust, amen, <clears throat> to do the work of the ministry. Amen. We thank God for each of these ministries. Amen. And we praise God. Amen. I uh, encourage you, hit that share button. Beloved, hit the share button. Share this broadcast with somebody. Hit that share button and share it with someone. Amen. Amen. Uh, to make contact with me, the bishop, you can reach me at my email address. Send me an email. If you need to get in contact with me, send me an email. Uh, send me a prayer request. We have a prayer request sent to my email address, which is worship word and praise tabernacle. Worship word and praise tabernacle at outlook.com. Praise God. Amen. It's tired spirits got to lift at outlook.com. Amen. So send me your prayer requests there. Send me your acknowledgments there. Words of encouragement, you can email me there. Put in the subject line, prayer request. If you are a minister or a pastor or, or whatever five-fold ministry that you're in, you're looking for covering, amen, write me at my email address. Put in the subject line, covering. Leave me a contact information or mailing information with email where I can get some information to you concerning this ministry and how you can be covered by this ministry. God bless you, Evangelist Carl uh, Kauser. Amen. God bless you. Amen. It's good to see you on this evening. Amen. Blessings of God make us rich, and he has no sorrow with it. So if you're looking for a covering, uh, as I said, 
Right? Remember email address, worship word and prayers, tabernacleoutlook.com. Put in the subject line covering, and bless God, we'll get the information to you where you can look it over, pray about it. And if God gives you the word, you can be a part of this ministry or just want to be covered by this ministry. You can be covered by this ministry without being a part. Amen. It's not what this is all about. It's about covering those who need the covering. Amen. So we bless God for this ministry. Praise God. Uh, uh, as soon as we've gone off the air, praise God. As soon as we have gone off the air, praise God, uh, you will be able to view this, this ministry message once again. It'll be on my YouTube channel, amen, which is listed under my name, amen. Or it will be posted, praise God, it will be posted right here on Facebook, amen. You can look at it once again if you desire to do so. Pardon me for drinking so much water, but I've been singing all day and ministering in music most of the day, all day long, and my throat is very parched and dry. But we thank and praise God. Amen. We thank and praise God. So those are the announcements I want to give to you today. Amen. Before we go to the word of God. Amen. Let's go to let's go to prayer and then we go into the word. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be on this to, to be on this live broadcast and to minister to the needs of your people. We ask you, let me decrease and you increase. Speak to me. Use me as never before. Bind the spirit of weariness and tiredness. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, we thank you right now and we give you praise. Quicken my mortal body by the spirit that dwells in me. God, we give you the praise and we give you the glory for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we call and we declare so. It is so. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Titus. Titus chapter 2, two verses of scripture. Uh, Titus chapter 2. Amen is where I want to go. Titus chapter 2. But it says, uh, but you speak the things which become sound doctrine. But you speak the things which become sound doctrine. We are living in a time now where people are no longer preaching or teaching sound doctrine. They're teaching everything that's not in the word of God. They're teaching everything that's contrary to the word of God. But Paul says here to Titus, teaching him and grooming him to be a leader. He says here, but you speak the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged women likewise, that you be in behavior as becometh holiness. Uh, Paul said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. So it says here that the oldest women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. I'm not going to touch that. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach Mm, that they may teach the younger women to be sober, that they may teach the younger women to be sober. The problem in the church and in the body of Christ today is that the older women are trying to be like the younger women and they can't teach them anything. Uh, but it's time for it's time out for the nonsense. It's time out for the foolishness. It's time for the older women, the aged women, and to act your age and act like God has intended you to act so that you can teach these younger women how to be women and how to be keepers at home. The scripture says here that they may teach the younger women, talking about the older women. Now, remember, we read the scripture before that, that the aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. The older women should know better by now. The older women should know what to do by now. The older women should know to keep their skirt tails down by now. They should be able to teach these younger women how to be wise and how to be a wife, how to be a keeper at home. Amen. The older women, Paul says here to Titus, that the older women teach the younger women to be sober. Amen. To love their husbands, to love their children. 
Uh, I remember as a child growing up, God bless you, Brother Rick Green, Professor Rick Green, God bless you. I remember coming up as a young man in the church with the older women would take these young women aside and take the young girls up as we were coming up and teaching them and talking to them how to carry themselves and what to do and how to do it. And, 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 and these young women became women of, 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 of women that have respect for themselves. Amen. But nowadays, in the time that we're living, and I heard somebody say, well, well preacher, bishop, we're in the millennial age. Well, then we might be in the millennial age, but God has not changed. He says, God, the Bible says that God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it's time now for these younger women to start to try to teach these young, oh, these, oh, I'm so sorry. It's time for these older women, thank you, Holy Ghost, to teach these younger women how to be women. Oh, bless his name. It's time to, to teach them how to be women. Uh, but, but as I said, uh, the scripture says here, it said that they teach these younger women, first of all, to be sober. Mm, to be sober. Teach them how to be sober. Teach them how to be a woman. Teach them how, how to be alert. How to be the example. Uh, how to, first, secondly, to love their husbands. And can I just throw in here to love their own husbands? Uh, but how can you teach? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it. How can you teach uh, someone else to love their husband and you're not loving your husband? Ah, I know I said something. Uh, but see, you got to be the example. Older women, you got to be the example. That's why we used to call them older women in the church, mothers of the church. But I have to craft the question, where are the mothers of the church? Seems like we've lost the mothers of the church. Where are the church mothers? Where are those teaching these younger women how to be keepers at home? Teaching them how to clean the house and how to sew and how to cook and all those good stuff. Now, Bishop, you done got now. Now you done went way out and left the field somewhere. Uh, you know, we don't do that no more. But see, that's why your husband is running around. Hmm. I don't know how I got here. This is not even my message today. That's how you, that's why they're running around. That's why my grandmother always told me, she said, son, she said, let me tell you something. When you get married, make sure you take care of your home. Because if you don't take care of it, another man will. And it goes on both feet. If you, and daughters, if you don't take care of your, what, your husband, another woman will. Another woman will. It's time to go back to holiness. It's time to come back to sanctification. Oh, bless his name. Oh, I'm I know I'm teaching right now. It says to love their husbands and to love their children. Oh, how many often have we seen in today's time? How often have we seen in today's time, in today's society, how these young girls are not loving their children? We got kids running around longing for love, longing for somebody to wrap their arms around them, longing for somebody to give them some love or some direction because they're not getting it at home with mama because mama's too busy running around with Tom, Dick, Harry, and Joe. Oh, I know I said something just now. Uh, but it's time for us to learn and time for these young women. Young women, it's time for the older women, it's time for you to teach your daughters, amen, and to love your children, love them. Teach them, give them love, show them love. Love begins at home. And if they're loved correctly at home, let me just drop this real quick. And I know I'm, I'm tough when it comes to the, the female gender, if you allow me to say it like that. Uh, and I'm talking about real female gender, not these transgenders. Hello, somebody. But what, what, what we got to teach, if we love our children at home, they will not be seeking love in places where they don't need to seek it. Oh, bless his name. And when they begin to date, whether it be male or female, when they begin to date, they'll begin to know what real love is. And when somebody really loving them and not just wanting them, but what they can get out of them. Oh, bless his name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me move. Let me move. It says here in verse five, to be discreet. Teach them to be discreet. Teach them to be discreet. You don't have to flaunt yourself. You don't have to fly, put yourself all out there. Teach them to be discreet. Chase, 
keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. I didn't write the word of God, beloved. I didn't write this word. Paul is teaching Tim Titus here. He's teaching him here. He's training him and he's telling them what to, how, how to, to teach these older women, what to tell these older women. Tell them this, to tell their younger women to be chaste and to be keepers at home. Keepers at home. Take care of your own house. Not to be a busy body in other man's matters, but be a good keeper at home. Uh, this says obedient to their own husbands. Obedient to their own husbands. Amen. Obedient to their own husbands. The vows, the wedding vows that we give, not the ones they're given nowadays, but the original vow says, love, honor, and obey. Uh, we need to learn, we need to learn to teach these young women. There is a part they must play. And that part is that you must be obedient to your husband. But husbands, let me say this, men. Let me say this, man. Men, you cannot expect your wife to be obedient and to do and to, 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 to listen to what you say if you're not loving them. Can I say that again? You cannot expect your woman or your wife, I don't say woman, but your wife, to be obedient and to be a good keep at home if you're not loving them like Christ love the church. The Bible declared, husband love your wife as Christ loved the church. And how did Christ love the church? He gave his own life for the church. Oh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to get down to where I need to be yet, but I, I just got a preference to where I'm going. Uh, it says uh, to be obedient to their own husbands, uh, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young women, young men. Now he just finished with the young women. And he told to Titus how to teach these young women, what to teach them. Now he's going, he's going to hit these young men. Young men likewise. Exhort to be sober-minded. Exercise self-control. Get a hold to yourself. Amen. In all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works. Young men, you got to be an example to the old, older men, you got to be an example to these younger men. You got to be an example to these younger men. You got to be the husband that you want these younger men to be. Am I saying something? One day I'm going to teach a class. Amen. I'm going to do a webinar on relationship and marriage. But 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 and it says here in all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works, in doctoring, showing uncorruptedness, gravity sincerity sound speech that cannot be condemned that he who is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you exalt the service well, i want to race down just a little bit more going down to verse 11 for the grace of god that things for the grace of god that brings salvation that has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, or can I use the word holy, righteously, and godly in this present world. We can live righteously. We can live godly in this present world. Teaching us, let me read it again, teaching us, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present day or in this present world. Why should we live this way? Why do we need to live holy? Why do we need to live sanctified? We need to live holy. Why do we need to live these things? And here's the verse, here's the two verses for tonight. Looking for that blessed hope. The reason why that's the subject tonight, looking for the blessed hope, that blessed hope. Amen. The reason why we need to live holy, the reason why we need to live a sanctified, consecrated life. What do I mean when I say sanctified? The Bible says that we've got to turn away from lust. We got to give up fornication. We got to give up adultery. 
We got to give up drinking and we got to give up reveling and all this kind of stuff. In other words, we got to turn our back on sin. And when we turn our back on sin, the Bible says, why the Bible says here, living soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The Bible declared it to Paul said to the Roman church, be in the world, but be not of the world. Uh, because, because we are looking for a blessed hope. We are looking for the time when it, Jesus calls us home. Uh, the scripture says here, looking for the blessed hope, verse 13, and the glorious appearing of the great God of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking for Jesus. We're listening for the trump of God. We're listening for the sound of the trumpet. For the Bible declared that the sound of the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. I'm looking for Jesus' return. In order to look for his return and be an expectancy of the return of God, I've got to live a holy life. I've got to live a clean life. And it can be done. For the Bible just declared here, looking for that blessed hope, Mm -hmm. and the glorious appearing of the great God, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we're looking for him. We're looking for him because he's already made the way. We just came through and we're still in the ending of the resurrection season. Uh, when Jesus came and died on the cross, and the Bible says that he rose on the third day, and the Bible says he went to the Mount of Figuration and ascended to the right hand of the Father. But I got good news for you tonight. He's coming back again. Uh, he's coming back to receive his children. And that is the blessed hope. That is the hope that we have that he's coming back for us. Looking with you, the hope that we have is that he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. For the Bible declared here who gave himself for us, verse 14, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Uh, Jesus gave himself for us um, that he might redeem us from iniquity. So it's time because he gave his life, um, because he shed his blood for us. Uh, we're looking for the blessed hope. Uh, we're looking for the time when the trump of God will sound. Uh, we're looking for a time we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. For the Bible declared here who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify himself of a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And it's time for us to look for Jesus. I'm looking for Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for Jesus. I'm I'm listening for a sound from heaven. I'm looking for I'm looking for the crack in the sky. Uh, whether if, if I'm still here and alive and breathing, I, I plan to be caught up to meet him in the air. And see, in order to look for this blessed hope, we got to prepare ourselves. We got to have our light lamps trimmed and burning. We can't be like the virgin. We can't be like the women. One was in the bed and the other taken. One was at the well drawing water and the other one was taken. But we got to be ready when he comes. And in order to be ready when he comes, first of all, you got to know Jesus Christ in the pardon, parting of your sins. You got to know him for yourself. You can't know him on mama's religion. You can't know him on mama's salvation. You can't know him on grandmama's salvation. But you got to know him for yourself. You got to know him for yourself. You got to know him for yourself. You got to know, you got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to know God for yourself. Oh, bless his name. You got to get to know him for yourself. And when you know him, Without a shadow of a doubt, you can look for that blessed hope, that hope that he's coming back, that hope that he's coming back. He's coming back for me and he's coming back for you. Do you have that blessed hope? Do you have that blessed hope? Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready to meet him? Are you still messing around in the world? Are you still fooling around in sin? Are you still fooling around on the dance floor? Are you still fooling around with alcohol and drugs and all that sinful stuff? 
Are you still messing around with that woman that's not your husband, not your wife, and that man that's not your husband? Are you still out there pretending to be something you're not? Huh? Are you still out there pretending to be a man, pretending to be a woman when God created you a man? I declare and I'll say it over and over again. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. It's time to live holy. It's time to live a sanctified life. And look for the blessed hope. Look for the return of Christ. Look for Jesus to come back in all of his splendor and in all of his glory. Don't worry about what's going on in the world right now. This is only Bible prophecy being fulfilled. What you see happening in Washington right now, what you see happening in the government and in this nation called the United States of America that was built upon and founded upon the word of God and Christian principles is only Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And I don't have time right now to get into it. But read Matthew chapter 24, I believe it is 25. Go to the book of Revelations and Flip back from Revelation to the book of Ezekiel and Daniel, and you will see this is all Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? Are you looking for the blessed hope? Are you looking and preparing for Jesus' return? He's already made the way. He's already prepared the way. He's already given you the answer. It is through Jesus Christ. So I, I extend to you an invitation. I extend to you an invitation to the great wedding feast. Don't be like that man that said I would come, but I got to go bury my father. Don't be like the other one that said I would come, but I got to go marry my daughter. My daughter's getting married. I'm invited to another wedding. Come to the table. Come over here where the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going on. So I extend to you an invitation this evening. If you don't know Jesus, if you have not, if you're not looking and expecting that blessed hope, I intend, I, I, I extend to you right now an invitation. Will you accept this invitation? I extend to you an invitation now. To get to know Jesus. And I declare to you, and I talk from experience, I declare to you, there's no better life but serving the Lord. There's no better life but serving the Lord. You say, well, preacher, I, 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 I go to church every Sunday and, 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 and I direct the choir or I sing in the choir or I'm on the usher board or I, I work in the church. Well, let me bust your little bubble right about now. All your church work, all your good works will not get you through the gate. But it's having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing Christ for yourself. Knowing him for yourself. And accepting him as your personal savior. And then living a holy life. Living a holy life. So I said, I live a holy life. Shun the wrong and do the right. I know the Lord will make a way for me. Do you know that tonight? Do you have Jesus on the inside? If you don't, you can right now. You can right now. And it's as simple as asking him to forgive you of your sins. Come into my life. Make me a new creature. And I accept him as your personal savior. And from that point forward, living a holy life. Getting to know him through his word. And the last and final step of the conclusion of the matter. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10. And thou shalt confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Christ has been raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Well, with the heart man believeth unto salvation, and with the mouth confession is made. Don't let nobody tell you 
that there was not a resurrection. We got people, we got, we got people rolling around here talking about there's no such thing as a resurrection. Jesus never got out of the grave. We got people rolling around the mouth, there was no Jesus and there was no resurrection. You got people running around talking about Jesus not coming back and there's no resurrection. The Bible declared. And there's not a book of fables, it's not a book of stories, there's not a book of poetry, but it's the unerrant word of God inspired by men who wrote it. By, and they were inspired by the Holy Ghost. The Bible declared that he's coming back for you. He's coming back for me. You got to be ready when he comes. Are you looking for the blessed one? The return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you pray that prayer this evening, you, you, you confess your sins, you accept the Christ as your personal Savior. You came to Jesus and you made him Lord of your life. You have now changed your life. You are now saved by the grace of God. And go tell somebody now that I'm saved. Confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. That Christ been raised from the dead. With the mouth member, with the heart member, believers under salvation, and with the mouth confession is made. Go tell somebody. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done in your life. Maybe you're watching this broadcast, and you've never, and you, 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 you need prayer for whatever you're going through. I'm going to pray in just a minute, my, Amen. We're going to reinstate our prayer line soon as well. But maybe you're viewing this broadcast and you, and God bless you, David, brother, brother Brock, God bless you. Maybe you've been viewing this broadcast and you need prayer. Amen. You need prayer. Amen. Excuse my, my, my throat, my, my singing and playing all day. <clears throat> maybe you've been viewing this broadcast. And you need prayer. <clears throat> and you've been going through some things. <clears throat> I want to pray with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to pray with you that right now. I want to touch and agree with you. Amen. For whatever your need is. You can send it to my email address as well. Worship Word and Praise, tabernacleoutlook.com. You can send it to my email address. Post your prayer request there. We're going to be praying with that. We're going to, we're going to take those prayer requests and pray over them until God brings the answer. But maybe you're viewing by, by, by Facebook Live or you're viewing me by Ustream. I want you to pray right now. I'm going to pray right now. Believe God that God is going to bless even you. And that whatever you need, that he'll open that door for you. Remember the message tonight, looking for the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Looking for the blessed hope. Looking for the return of Christ. Maybe you, you, may, you need prayer and, 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 and going through something. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to believe God. If you need a healing in your body, you need a financial breakthrough, you need clarity and direction. Whatever you need, I'm going to pray right now. And I'm going to believe God that God is going to break and destroy every yoke in your life. Now, I, I'm, I'm not like some of these, these so-called, hallelujah, some of these prophets out here, amen, that, that, that want to prophesy, I mean, I'm sorry, prophesy, amen. I'm not going to some of these people out here, I got a word from the Lord. No, 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 no. All I got is prayer. All I can do is pray for you and believe God with you that God is going to open the door. See, see I, I, I don't play no games with the Lord. I don't play these 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 these, these, uh, uh, these antics and these these, these gimmicks and whatnot. I, that, that, I don't do that because see, I've got to answer to God. I got to answer to God. 
for everything that I do in this body. And if more preachers and these so-called prophets, prophets would realize and understand that scripture, the Bible is declared, the word of God says that we have to give an account for every word and deed that's done in the body. They better understand they got to answer to God for these things, that they, these little crooked things that they're doing. They got to answer for. This is why I encourage people. This is why I encourage you who have healing. Don't talk about them. Pray for them. Because in the end, the sum of the matter, the conclusion of the matter is this. They got to answer to God. All the gimmicks, all the schemes, all the lies, all the adultery, all the fornication that they're doing behind closed doors, they got to answer to God. And they're standing and preaching the gospel. There's a lot of it going on right now. I don't know how I got here, but I got to say this because I feel it in my spirit. I feel prompt in my soul. They got to answer to God. And I know I, I, it looks bad, it looks shady, it looks terrible for the real ones that are out here. It's tough for those who are out here really preaching the gospel, who is really trying to live of the gospel. And these so-called preachers and pastors and, and, and prophets and, and, and apostles, whatever titles they hold, that are doing this stuff out here now. People are being hurt. People are being damaged. People are being turned from the from the body of Christ. They're being turned from Jesus. They're being turned from the from the from the, from the sanctuary. But the conclusion of the matter is this: that these leaders, these people in leadership, has got to give an account to God. They got to answer to the Almighty God. I think they've forgotten this. Or either the enemy just got them, got them so clouded and so backwards and so 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 topsy turvy they don't realize it, but they got to answer to God. And that's why I'm so very careful about what I preach. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel your agreement. I'm so very careful about what I say on a daily basis, not just in ministry. But every day of my life, you got to be careful what you say. You got to answer for God. For the Bible says for every word and deed done in the body, you got to answer to God for it. Good, bad, or indifferent, you're going to answer on judgment day. You better say, well, preacher, I repented of that. I asked God to forgive me. You got to answer for that. You got to give an account. Yes, he's wiped it away. Yes, he's forgiven it, but you got to give an account for it. I didn't write the book. I just preach it. So we've got to be careful what we say and what we do. we got to be careful how we say it and how we do it. Yeah, hard on both shot. we got to be careful. When we hurt when people are, when we hurt somebody or when we damage somebody with our lips and with our mouth, we got to give an account. Not only for what we say or for what we did, but for the soul that we damaged and for the soul that we hurt. So we have to be careful as leaders, as leaders, no matter what area of ministry you're in, you are a leader. If you're an evangelist, if you're an apostle, prophet, teacher, even if you're a Levite, if you're a musician, you have to be careful. You're in leadership. Especially, can I drop this real quick? Thank God for uh, Brother Brock is listening. He's a he's a he's an awesome musician, uh, an anointed, talented musician. And I thank God for him. Watched him many times on the live. Even as we as Levites, we as musicians, and I speak as from the from the from, from the from the from the seat of a musician of almost 50 years. Soon next year will be 50 years in music ministry. We have to be very careful because we usher in the anointing. We set the stage, we set the tone, we 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 clear the atmosphere. 
So the anointing of God can come in and do what he needs to be done. So we got to be very careful because we hold a responsibility as musicians. I speak to myself as well. We hold a responsibility as evangelists. We hold a responsibility as a prophet, as an apostle, as a teacher, and God knows as a pastor, as a bishop. We hold the responsibility. We hold lives in our hands. And this is why I encourage, I state, I, when I talk to other musicians that I, that I know of, this is why I encourage them. Bruh, sis, listen, you hold lives in your hands. You set the tone that God can come move in the room so they can get what they need to get when they walk through the door. It's your, you, you hold something in your hands. Evangelists, you hold something in your hands. Prophet, you hold lives in your hands. You got lives in your hands, whether you realize it or not. I don't care what office of ministry that you're in. You hold lives in your hands. And it's, and it's, and it's important. It's very important that we be on point with Jesus Christ. That our lives be hidden. And that we be sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. That we be sensitive to is to the anointing of God. That we be connected to the man of God. That we be connected to whatever ministry we're ministering at, wherever we are, that we be connected to the spirit of the of the of the leadership of the house. So we must know him for ourselves. We must get to know God. Get to know him as we as we know ourselves. Get to know him as we have never known him. How do we do that? How do I do that, Bishop? How do I do that? And I take the time to do this because you know I, I've been ready. I've been through so much over the last. Oh my goodness! Oh my Lord, have mercy! Over forty something years of salvation, Amen. For forty almost forty something years, Amen. Of, of ministry, I've, I've been through so much, and I realize I've been told you, you got to do this. You need to do this and you need to do that, but they never told me how to do it. You need to be sanctified. You need to be holy, but they never told me how, how to be sanctified. How do I get to be sanctified? How do I get to holiness? So how do I get close to God? How do I get connected with God? Through prayer, through fasting, and through his word. Through his word. Prayer, fasting, and his word. All in a nutshell, spending time with him. Spending time with him and getting to know who he is. Getting to know who he is. How does a woman and a man get to know each other? Through the dating process. Dating, spending time, talking, getting to know one another. Getting to know, court, it's called courtship. In my day, it's called courtship. I don't know what they're calling it now, but in my day, they called it courtship, courting. Talking to one another. Getting to know one another. They're not courting no more. They're going right to the bedroom. Hey. But it's time to go back to courtship and getting to know Jesus. Getting to know him. Establishing a relationship with him. Getting to know what moves him. Getting to know what pleases him. Getting to know how what, what causes him to unlock doors for us. And to know him, the scripture says, and the power of his might. And the power of his might. Oh, God, we bless your name today. We bless your name today. So I, I, I encourage you, get to know who Jesus is. When you get to know him, you can look for that blessed hope, which is the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can expect to hear the trump of God sound. Do you know Jesus? If you don't, 
Just ask them to come into your life. Ask them to forgive you of your sins and to make you a new creature. And accept his son Jesus as your personal savior. And, and ask him to be Lord of your life. Just that easy. And to seal the matter, the scripture declared, be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. I don't care what folks say and what folk teach. The, 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 the evidence of, of being filled with the Holy Ghost and knowing that the Holy Ghost is there is speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. How do you know that? What's your biblical proof, Bishop? Acts chapter 2. They were all in the upper room, gathered in one place. The Bible says, cloven, they became a quaking and a shaking, cloven tongues of fire laid upon their head. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave utterance. So I encourage you today, if you've accepted Christ, seek for the filling of the Holy Ghost. It's not all about my laying on the hands or, or a pastor's laying on the hands. It's about you seeking God for yourself. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost right in your bedroom, right on your knees as you cry out to God. Wherever you seek God, wherever that secret place is, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray right now as I get ready to leave you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray right now for the needs of God's people. And as I said, if you have a prayer request, send it to my email address, worship, word, and praise, tabernacle, outlook.com. Worship, word, and praise, tabernacle, outlook.com. Send it to my email address. I'm going to be praying for that prayer request. Put in the subject line, prayer request. But I'm going to pray right now. And we're going to believe God with you for direction, for healing, for breakthrough. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stretch my hands, God, I ask God that you would touch right now. God, whatever the need is in the lives of the people of God that, that is viewing this broadcast, God, I ask right now that you would meet the need. God, I ask you to give them a breakthrough, breakthrough, financial breakthrough, that you would give them a healing in their body, that you would give them clarity and direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we thank you right now, and we give you the praise to you. We declare and decree it so. We call it so. We redeem it so. In Jesus' name, it is so. Amen, and it is so. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much for hearing us this evening. Pray that you was blessed with the word of God. Pray that you are blessed with the word of God. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We bless God for my wife. I thank God. I give I give honor to my wife and I thank God for her. She was on with me Easter to Easter. Amen. If you missed that, it's posted on Facebook. It's posted on YouTube. But on, on, on next week, the 17th of next week, I mean, write it on your calendar, if you will, ma'am, if you will, sir. If you have access to my Facebook page, join me on the 17th of this month by way of Facebook, and wish my wife a beloved 56th birthday. Amen. She'll be celebrating her 56th birthday April the 17th of this month. So join me on April the 17th by way of Facebook Live and wish her a happy birthday. Amen. Wish her a happy birthday. She's excited. I'm excited for her. All that God, all that the doctor said wouldn't happen, God has yet have her here. And I'm praising God. Hey, hallelujah. I'm praising God. I'm sorry. I'm praising God for what he's done and how he's done it. Amen. Evangelist Valerie uh, Cows, she had an opportunity to meet her back in 2013. Amen. At the consecration. She, and, and Evangelist Valerie, she's still here. She's still praising God. Amen. There's a clip there. I'm going to have to post that clip again. There is a video there where she's praising God in her chair. She's dancing unto the Lord. I'm going to have to post that once again. Amen. To, to the people of God. I might do it on her birthday and post that one on her birthday. But we're going to post it again when you see her dancing in her chair. Feet moving like you would not believe. And we're looking for God to do a miracle and raise her up out of that wheelchair. And no, because God is a, God can do it. He's a God of healing, deliverance. And we believe in God that's already done in her life. So join me April 17th. 
wishing her a happy birthday right here on Facebook Live. Meet me here on Wednesday night, 7.30 Wednesday night. If you have a testimony, amen, if you know somebody with a testimony, amen, a word from the Lord, short word from the Lord, join me on Wednesday night. I'm going to open up the live to give you an opportunity to come on with me and to give God praise. Give God praise. Amen. Give God praise for what he's done in your life and how God has done it. And this is the first time I'm opening up of the live uh, for someone to come on with me. So, uh, yes, he can do it, and he did do it. Amen. And we thank God for that. So join me Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m., right here on Facebook Live. Amen. And and after we're going to be having a webinar soon, I'm going to do a webinar. Amen. Real soon. We'll be giving the information for that and where to meet me on that webinar. And that uh, we're going to do a webinar on relationship and marriage. Amen. We're going to do one of that. We're going to ask, we're going to teach on some of the stuff I touched on tonight. And that's going to be one of the scriptures in, in Titus that I touched on tonight. Amen. We're going to be teaching, amen, on marriage and relationship, uh, the proper way to date, amen, what, what marriage is and what it entails and the responsibility of the husband, the responsibility of the wife, amen. We got so many men that when the wife get, get when the enemy attacks their body and, and they get to a point where they can't do for themselves, we got some men that, that runs out on them. Hello, somebody. We got somebody, we got some men that are run, that are, that are fly the coop. And I can say it honestly, because I'm 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 right here with mine. I'm taking care of my wife. I'm taking care of her. Not the nursing home. I'm taking care of her. I'm waiting on her hand and foot. I'm 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 managing her health care. Why? Because she's my wife. Through sickness and in health, till death do us part. I'm gonna be talking about that in the webinar, amen, and breaking down. The, the, the wedding vows to be clearly understood. So I'm going to be talking about this in the webinar real, real soon. Amen. So join me on Facebook Live. Don't miss a broadcast. I'm telling you, I never know what God's going to do. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. Amen. On next Sunday, amen, we may not be here uh, on the broadcast. I might have a guest to try to continue to do the broadcast on next Sunday because we have a prior engagement. But in any event, we will be back on, on next Wednesday night, on, on, on uh, the Wednesday after her birthday, which is the 18th. Amen. We will be back. But on next Sunday, which is the 15th, amen, we may not make it here to do our broadcast, to do the Facebook Live broadcast. But we'll try to get someone, amen, to do it for, for me. If not, meet me here. Meet me here on next Wednesday night, the testimony or whatever God places in your heart to share with the people of God. Now, know this. Let me just drop this. And I'm going to set these ground rules on next Saturday. Next, I mean, next Wednesday. I have no problem, if it's not of God, to cut it off. Glory to God. But we, we're going to be praising God together on next Wednesday. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God. Amen. For uh, Brother Brock. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. We bless God for him. Amen. We thank God for Evangelist Valerie Kauser. We thank God. Amen. For all of those who have, have joined us. We thank God for uh, rest God. I'm trying to see who else is on. Amen. We thank God for all of you who have joined us today. Amen. By Facebook Live. Amen. We praise God for you. I want you to know on behalf of this ministry that we love you and that we're praying for you. Amen. Thank God for my assistant. Amen. Uh, my assistant, Brother Elder Beeman. Amen. My assistant, my second in command. Amen. We thank God for him and we praise God for him and we bless God. Amen. Exactly, Evangelist Valerie. No foolishness. Amen. We thank God for him. So uh, bless God for each and every one of you. Remember, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. So don't drown. Don't sink. Tie a knot in the end of the rope. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. For help is already on the way. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we bless God for you. We thank God. Amen. For my former chief apostle. And I say former Chief Apostle, we do thank God because I, I was with him for almost 30 years before God led me to other pastors. But we do thank God, and I give honor to him, uh, Bishop Larry Earl Boston. We thank God for him out of Jacksonville, Florida. 
my former chief apostle, we thank God for him. And I will always give him honor and with due respect because he has stuck by my side down through the years. Amen. We thank God for him and I praise God for him. He's, he's a part of, big part of where, or the reason I am where I am. Amen. And we thank God for him. And we praise God for my former chief apostle, Bishop Larry Earl Boston out of Jacksonville, Florida. We bless God for him. So we thank God. He was my He was the man that consecrated me and set me aside. Amen. Into the bishophood. And I'll never forget him. And I'll never disown him. Amen. But I do thank God for him. God led me to greener pastures, led me in another direction. Amen. And we're no longer affiliated with that organization. But we thank God for Bishop Larry Earl Boston. Continue to pray for him. Continue to pray for me. Amen. As God continues to bless us. God bless you is our prayer. See you on next Wednesday. Amen. See you on Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Right here. Facebook Live, Ustream channel. God bless each and every one of you is our prayer. Until we meet again by way of Facebook Live, remember, Jesus loves you, and I do too. It's only five ones, man, but it's okay. It's all good. Five.